Hey everybody, welcome to Gospel Music Buzz. Uh, today, this week on the Buzz, we have the honor and the privilege to sit down here with Grammy nominated, Dove Award winning artist, pastor and author, William McDowell. We're so glad to be here today. So glad to be here. Thanks for taking the time Absolutely. to talk with us. Listen, you're in for a great treat today as we talk about this Grammy record titled The Cry, yes. The Live Experience. Yes. Listen, this album is fire. It's amazing. Um, so we're going to get right into yeah. it. So we like to start off all of our interviews with one, one question in particular. And here it goes. Okay. Tell us, what's your origin? Like, um, everyone knows Willie McDowell. The Willie McDowell that we see today has been father, writer, worship leader. But where did this all start? In? Wow. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've been uh, saved in a long time. Uh, my first memory of life is actually telling my grandfather uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm saved and my parents don't believe me. I was, I was three. <laughs> yes. And so uh, I got baptized when I was five. Um, Whoa, that's, that's pretty early. Yes. Um, but I see that same thing in my children right now. Uh, they're all uh, strong in their faith at a young age. So, um, I, I see how that, that, that works. Um, and I, I started playing uh, piano, and organ, and drums uh, in church at 12. Uh, and so I've been, I've been doing this for uh, a long time in a hidden place. Uh, and I did that. Um, I've, been, I've been serving in church all my life, serving, uh, playing, and supporting people. And I uh, had a chance to travel the world with another worship leader uh, early on in life. And, and, um, served faithfully as a worship pastor, uh, and then the Lord uh, called me to this assignment, which is something that He had to do because I didn't want to do it. Uh, and so, um, but I'm so so grateful uh, for yes, which I say is an unfolding word. Um, whenever you say yes to God, um, you don't exactly know what that's going to lead to. Uh, and and so, we, of course, you know, we see all the trials, but we don't necessarily see all the trials that go with that. But um, you know. My greatest privilege, of course, is being a husband, a father, and a pastor uh, as well, and, and leading worship uh, around the world. So that's a quick, that's a quick. <laughs> synopsis of what could be a, a very long story, but yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you said yes. Yes to God's plans for your life because you've been impacting the world in a big way. You've been impacting my life personally wow. as a worship leader. Wow. Are you a PK? I'm not a PK. You're not a PK. I'm not a PK. Wow. No. <laughs> I was wanting to know that. Are you a yeah. just kid? Um, well, I'm a PK, so you've impacted my life as a worship leader. Wow. As, as I, I've sung so many of your songs in our services, so you've impacted me directly. Um, so it's so awesome. It's so awesome to hear how you got started on the journey and um, how God has been using you. So we want to talk about the record, this brand new record. This is your um, your sixth album. Yes. Yes. That's, that's, that's big, that's a big deal. I'm very, very grateful for it. Um, I did not know when we started that this would be the trajectory of life and ministry. I, I'm not one of those people who had a, a, a huge ministerial ambition. So it wasn't like, I want to be, you know, this, and I want to, you know, you, you talk to some people, and it's like, you know, they're like, yeah, I want to go to the nations, and I want to, that wasn't, that wasn't, I just wanted to be faithful. Um, I did not know that the Lord would, would show the kind of favor that he has. Um, you know, he, he breathed on something that totally changed life. Uh, um, I gave myself away was not even supposed to be recorded. Uh, it wasn't on the set list. It wasn't a part of that. Yeah. Um, it was just something that we were singing locally at church. And I, I was never planning on recording the song. Uh, and, and really, um, even the night of, it, it's kind of weird. I know we're talking about over a decade ago right now. You know, we're going to get to the car. But, but the night of itself was, that wasn't like we left there saying, oh my gosh, this song is amazing. That wasn't even, it was just a response to another moment. But the Lord decided to show favor and breathe on it. I take it around the world, and so now that we're talking about six projects later, um, that's not something I saw, um, but I'm so, so grateful. But you've been obedient yeah. to yeah. the call yeah. every step of yeah. the way, and that's yeah. how God works. And that's all He really requires of us, yeah. is our obedience yeah. and our answer to Absolutely. the call, even though we don't know 
A, B, C, D. It doesn't reveal everything, the process, but once we say that yes, we commit to that yes, yeah. the rest is up to him. Now, this project was one that took 20 years to make. 20 years? Yes, because every project that I've recorded prior to this project has been looking forward to a new book out. This one is a response to a movie that took place uh, at our church the last three years. And so it's it's how do we invite people into this experience and, and give language to what we've been experiencing with this inexpressible, overwhelming presence of God and, and, and the testimonies of what's been happening. How do we give language to that and how do we invite people into it? Uh, and so I was always, you know, and so I say 20 years praying uh, for an outpouring of the Spirit of God, praying to see certain things that we see in Scripture, praying to see certain things that we see happening in other portions of the world, and to to literally look forward to every song prior to this project was looking forward to that moment, looking forward to you know, trying to give us tools, decorations, something to position us for it. Then it happened, yeah. and, and, and when it happened, now there's a different perspective to write from, uh, and, and that perspective is how do we talk about the, the God who came to answer the prayer that we've been praying for 20 years and get people language and the ability to, to enter into it themselves. I mean, I've been listening to the record, um, it's only been out a little while, um, but from the time I've hit play every song, I'm not a choir, mm -hmm. but I find myself weeping <laughs> listening to this record, mm -hmm. and the power of God is so real, it's so evident, it's so powerful, it's impact, it's very impactful and it's transformational when you listen to this record. And I've had the opportunity to listen to every song and just pure worship. And you don't want to come out of that place. Now you know where we ended with I don't want to leave. Right. We don't, don't want to you don't want to move. Yeah. We don't want and there isn't a song that you know some records you can listen to it and you like oh I'll skip over that one. You know, you like it but you you know you, you have your favorites and every song is a favorite. Every yeah. song it's it's God speaking. I mean, I don't plan on stopping, but if this was my last project, I'd be happy because every song means that much to me. It's funny you said that. I have a question on here about that. Um, it was towards the end, <laughs> sure. but since you brought it up, I, I was going to ask: like, Is this your finale record? Because I was at your um, the deeper conference early on um, this year, and. Um, I wanted to quote you, and sometimes my memory doesn't serve me right because I'm a mom of four and I have a mom brain. But <laughs> if my memory does serve me right, I remember you saying that this might be your last project, I, and you were going to be passing the, well, passing it on to the. We have family. we have to pass the baton. Right. Um, and, you know, we can hang on too long sometimes. Um, I don't do this for for a business, you know, um, and so for me, I'm. I'm you know, my, my mission from the very beginning, when the Lord spoke to me years ago, said when you speak when I'm speaking, I'll make a way for my message. It, as long as he's giving me something, that's as long as I'll do it. But part of, I, I'm not like, okay, well, I have to do this and I have to do that, you know. It, I, I literally don't know. And, and so when I say I don't plan on stopping, the, the, the irony is I don't plan on doing something else. I'm literally open to, to Until God tells until you. Until he tells me. Um, so that, that's where we are. But I am very intentional about raising up the next generation. Um, using, you know, God is, is, has put uh, a number of, of uh, young worship leaders in my sphere of influence uh, as far as mentees. And so I'm being very intentional about creating opportunities and platforms for them. Um, because we, we live in an age where when people walk through the door, they're going to hold over for other people. Uh, but I want to make sure that that's what we do. Yeah. And I, and I do see that. I, I want to talk about your daughter, Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, she's featured on three mm -hmm. of your records. And um, she's a, she's amazing. I got to experience her life at the, um, the Worship Leaders Conference. And I mean, her voice alone is a gift. It is. But the presence that she carries. Yes. yes. It's, there are no words to really describe. So I do see how you've been mentoring her. Mm -hmm. And um, so tell me a little bit about her and. Yeah. Um, my joy to do that. She's, um, so th that's an assignment for me. That's not just a, a, a good idea because I saw a gifted person. Um, literally, um, the, the way that it happened was years ago, uh, I was actually at a conference um, with my wife and the Lord spoke to me uh, and, and said, 
there's this girl in the city name, I knew who she was, but I did not know her, and said, I'm making you responsible for her. And it was like, okay. <laughs> but I didn't know her. I didn't, it's not like I went and reached out to her or something like that. And then when the Lord said something, I told my wife, and that's what the Lord said. And so she said, okay, well, we'll pray about it. And so, you know, it, it literally happened where one day we happened to be in the same place, and uh, she comes up. And I'm like, you know, how are you doing that? Of course, knowing what the Lord said, but not trying to make anything happen. Um, and, and she said, um, yeah, I said, what, what, what's going on in your life? She said, oh, nothing, just waiting for you. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> and so that began this this uh, bond that, that my wife and I have with her and pouring into her. And so we've been very, very intentional uh, about that pour, about that development. Um, her gift has been ready for years. Um, it's really about, but, but the Lord is more interested in our character uh, and our readiness uh, for what he has for us and the assignment he has in our life. And so, you know, a lot of people are not uh, keen in this generation for patience and, and development and growth, but we've been very intentional about that. And as we've seen that, we wanted to utilize the platform to start the Spirit Breakout, uh, of course, and, and, and in this project, we were, we were intentional. She's singing three songs because we know that that season is coming uh, for her uh, to be lost and to miss the earth. The, the, the thing is, you hear her sing, you're like, why isn't she ready now? It's because we know the devil doesn't play for her. Oh, yeah. uh, and so it's one of those things we want to make sure that you know, everyone is spiritually grounded enough to handle the assignment that God has for their life. So, yeah. I love it. Um, I mean, the song Touch, Touch the Hem. Yes. That song is so powerful. I mean, I, I think about my dad, who was a pastor, um, who recently got ill. Um, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And when I hear that song, I'm thinking about how God, God has already started to a healing work in his body and you know? I think about I gotta have my dad hear this song so wow. Wow. I mean he knows the Lord and all that sure. and we believe in God but sure. the power in this song it's like oh my god mm -hmm. if we can only just reach out and touch mm -hmm. touch mm -hmm. part of his garment mm -hmm. we're gonna be made whole yeah. Yeah. so that song is powerful and I'm I'm so grateful that you could be obedient and not just the fulfilling your call and like making sure that others fulfill their call as well. So we're gonna back up a little bit. Um so I know when you know when whenever you're writing a record, recording, get you get ready to record a record, you're usually thinking about your audience. Um you're usually I know for me I'm usually thinking about who is gonna be listening to this record. So who is this record for specifically? Uh, is it for just a church? Is it for worship leaders? Like who is this record directed to? Okay, this is going to sound very generic, but this is for everybody. Um, because everyone, you know, one of the things that the Lord is doing in the body of Christ is that like people with expectation, particularly the Western church. Um, the Western church has a, a, a um, we just deal with low expectation. We don't actually believe that God's going to do this in uh, And so, <laughs> Because of that, you know, part of this, you know, um, the declaration, the testimony, what it does, it, it literally starts what we call righteous envy, which is when God does something somewhere for someone else to make you jealous so that you'll cry out for the very thing he wants you to have. So that, that's a part of what he's doing. It's, it's an awakening for those who are walking in the expectation. At the same time, for those who don't yet know the Lord, um, it, it, these declarations begin to talk about particularly the testimony, we're going to talk about the power of the living God, uh, who is not dead, who is still moving, still proving how great he is. Um, Demographic-wise, um, you know, I, I had a conversation years ago um, with uh, a label, and they asked, well, who is your demographic? And I said, my demographic is the hungry, and they're in every demographic. <laughs> so, it, it, it's for everybody. Yeah. Now, you have... Uh, Quite a few features on this record. Um, Friends. <laughs> amazing artists in their own rights. You have Natasha Cobbs, Yolanda Adams, Travis Green, David and Nicole B. Um, how did you decide um, who to feature? I never, and which song to feature yeah, them on? I never make a predetermined decision. So it's never about, uh, I want to get this person, I want to get that person. It's never about that. It's really about um, 
a lot of times if I'm writing a song or hearing a song, you know, there may be a, a particular anointing or gift, what, what we call it in their wheelhouse. It's like this person would declare this in a way that would be so powerful that it would literally make this declaration even more will make it stronger uh, and so for that uh, it's really about you know relationship first yeah. uh, for me it's not about you know um, it's never an industry driven decision it's all relationship first and then you know partnering with gifts and anointing that can really take something to another level yeah and they certainly did that they absolutely did it listen um, if you're watching this and you haven't gotten the record yet now it's a good time to go get the cry um, I tell people it's my best one. It's amazing. Um, I mean, for every season, as I said, as I listen to the record, it, it's so timely for me. It's it's timely for what God is even doing in my life, in my ministry. It's it's on time. It's an on time word, and God is speaking so clear and so loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The listeners, if you're listening, it's a meeting with God. It's a literal meeting with God on this record, Absolutely. and. You don't want to not <laughs> have a meeting with God. So what was the live recording like? Um, uh, so this was the most special for me um, because our church was there. Um, it was recorded in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Our church, of course, is in Orlando, Florida. Uh, but um, 300 members of our church came to Chattanooga uh, and they were sitting right down front and because this project is not just my story, it's our story, it's what the Lord has done uh, in our church for the last three years. So everyone took a personal ownership of the song, and so I, the way I like to say it is, our church was the engine that drove the worship of the night. Um, there's just so many moments where um, these songs are so deeply personal and connected to our church uh, that, that literally, like on the song of cry, if you see the video of that song, um, there, there's a, a a hand motion that our church does when we do that. And literally, as you start, you see these 300 people start, and no one else in the room knows what's going oh. on, but they all just join in. And they were the, the driver of it. And I think probably one of the most um, impactful moments for me personally, just to kind of speak of the connection of the night, um, there's a song that, that to me is my favorite. It's called Stay. Um, it, 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 it means a lot. It's like if, if you had to say, describe your heart for God in a, in a song, that would be it. Um, and I had shown the church that song. That wasn't something we had been doing at church um, the week before. Because um, I mean, I when, literally when I sit down on the piano and play that song by myself, I'm weeping. It's just yeah. like, it's that kind of song. Yeah. And I've never gotten through it without weeping. Still, to this day, I've never gotten through without weeping. So what I did is I said, I told the church, I said, hey, you, know, you guys know we have the recording next week, and you know, I have this song I want to show you guys, and it's right before I was supposed to preach. And so I said, let me, let me just you know, show it to you. And I jokingly said to them, I said, you know, like I'm going to get all my tears out now because you know you can't sing and cry at the same time. And so you know, I showed them the song. I mean, it just, we're all weeping all over the church, that kind of thing. So we get to the recording, the night of the recording, and so we get to this song, and we're right in the middle, like I'm just overwhelmed by just the reality of the lyrics and, and, and what we're saying to God and His presence in that moment. So I couldn't sing, uh, because of course you can sing the same time you worship you know. Uh, and, and there's a moment, right when I can't sing it, that you hear the melody coming from the room. And it's, it's our 300 who said, it was almost like, we got you. you know, we're with you. And they just started singing. And even though no one else had ever heard that song before with those people, it, that, that shows what the night was like. Um, to, I know I'm talking about a whole bunch here, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think one of the hardest things to describe to people about the night, even though you can hear everything, um, the song, I Don't Want to Leave, for example, um, it's four minutes on radio, it's nine minutes on the CD. It was 25 minutes that night. 25 minutes. Because literally no one to leave. The song, Nothing Like Your Presence, is 13 minutes on the CD. It was 22 minutes that night. Um, there were just moments that were so explosive that literally we couldn't even release it all. And it just, his presence was so tangibly overwhelming that, that you, you literally couldn't. We couldn't, we couldn't even release it all. And, and so, you know, the song, I Don't Want to Leave, that was literally the sentiment. And, and what we were trying
trying to capture with that song was these moments that we've had in our church where the presence of God comes in in such a strong, tangible way that literally for hours, hundreds of people will sit in His presence without a worship there. So they're like, if He's there, we're here. And so they're literally sitting and no one wants to leave. No one wants to move. No one wants to say anything. We just want to enjoy it. And uh, to see hundreds of people do that, it's absolutely cool. Yeah, I definitely had a taste of that again at the conference. Um, it's real. I and mean, I, I felt, I just had a taste of it in a few days being there. And um, it's very powerful. And that song, I want to talk about the song Stay. Yeah. <laughs> because that song, uh, I mean, I was listening, listening to it again this morning as I was getting ready. And I feel like, because I have a question here that, um, was, I was going to ask you if you had to pick one song that would sum up the entire revival. What would that song be? It's stay. And it's stay. And I, it was it was the song for me too because I feel like everything happens in the presence of God. There's peace. There's healing. You're made whole. Answers. Ways are being made when you're in the presence. So, wow. It's, it's you know there's this um, moment. Stay is written really out of Luke 24. You have, you know, the two disciples who are walking in Emmaus Road with Jesus after Christmas and the resurrection. They don't recognize it as him. So he's walking with them on the seven mile journey, explaining the scripture to them and everything the scriptures say about him, uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. And, you know, after this point, of course, the scripture says, you know, they talk to one another, said, they got our hearts burned with them as he talked with us. But the scripture says this when, he, when they got to their destination, these, these words just like literally like illuminates me. It says Jesus acted as if he was gonna keep going. Acted as if he was gonna keep going. But they begged him instead. Which lets us know that he never intended on going. He just wanted to know that someone wanted to stay. And I've learned this principle that he stays when he's welcome and he's raised rejected. And 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 I remember there was a moment in my study um, with the Lord. I, I you know because of all the things we've seen, you know, the, the miracles and, and all this different stuff that we've been seeing over the past number of years, you know, whenever there's a, a, a patch of services where it's like, it seems like it's normal again, yeah. you know, like, okay, we're not having one of those kind of encounter services, we're just working through the Word and teaching and, you know, great worship and, you know, whatever, we leave and go home, we're not having one of those, oh my gosh, mind-blowing kind of, you had to be there moments, um, and, and whenever those seasons come, or when they first started coming out, I now recognize that revival is a culture, not just a, a movement itself, but but when it first started happening, I, I, I remember specifically saying to the Lord, I, I don't want it to end. You know, and so I mean, I got my, my, my knees in my heart, I, just, I don't want it to end, I just, I just want you to stay. And, and it was just like, there's this sentiment that I have, that I recognize that everything that's happened uh, over the last number of years of my life, you know, 20 years of answer prayer, um, is not, I'm not the catalyst for it. It's because he decided to come. And so now, for me, all I want to be is a good host. I, I want to make sure that I host him in a way where he stays. Wow. I mean, that's my desire as well. <laughs> um.
use those arrows, right? Um, and then we will continue to obey the Lord and serve His people and serve the body. So, you know, we get into a lot of plans, but I didn't plan any of this. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm really, you know, desiring to, to do is that my yes will continue to stay for the Lord and whatever He wants to do. I mean, worship schools and raising up people and all, I can say all that stuff. At the end of the day, um, I've cut back my travel quite a bit. Um, this year I've taken a hundred less flights than I did three years ago um, because I don't want in, in all of this for my kids and my people. Uh, and so, at the end of the day, uh, that's what I want to do. Your first Absolutely. assignment mm -hmm. in our household. Mm -hmm. All right, so we would love for you to look into the camera and talk to um, up and coming worship leaders um, and give them your advice. What can they do as they serve in their local church to cultivate such a revival and to, um, yeah, what, what can they do to have this same revival in their church, in their local church, sure. as a worship leader? Uh, you are a worship leader <clears throat> serving in your local church. Um, I, I just, there's so many things I, I wish I could say, that's why we have to give you a famous plug. Uh, but, but honestly, if, if, if you, um, well, I would say this, make sure that your primary affection is the Lord. Um, we can get into a lot of ministerial ambition and we desire to be here and there and everywhere. And understanding that that public ministry does not replace private devotion. Private devotion precedes public manifestation. And so private devotion has to be uh, your primary goal. Being satisfied with Him has to be your primary goal. And that actually means that even if you never get to go, that you're satisfied with Him. Because the, the primary uh, ministry of worship is the direct ministry to the Lord Himself. People become secondary, but the ministry of worship is the ministry to the Lord Himself. And so make sure that He's your number one goal, your number one affection, the one who satisfies you. And if He so chooses to use you on a broader platform, I didn't probably look at and say, What are you using your future for you to say? But trust me, um, for years and years and years, He was my sole satisfaction. My ambition was not the world, my ambition was to please Him. Amen. All right, for all things William McDowell, you can check out his website. Be sure to get all of his music, all six of his records. It's available on all digital platforms. You can stream it, download it, and make sure you get to cry today. Thanks for being here with Gospel Music Buzz.